it has been a busy day today. We went out for breakfast, which is a rarity. And whenever you go out for breakfast or whenever you go out, it's always so much food. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera away from my face in just a minute here. Uh, just gonna give a little bit more time for people to join. Today's car, we're gonna do some watercoloring with Tombow Dual Brush Pens. If you've watched my lives before or any of my YouTube videos, you'll know that that's kind of my preferred way to watercolor. I like how easy, I think it's really easy because you can put your color directly where you want it and then just blend it out. Oh, yep, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, maybe you have to hit the refresh because I'm popping in after you guys. <laughs> Um, but today is actually even easier than the ones I typically do. Maybe it's just because of the images, but we only will use five markers to color all the flowers and berries. Shannon, you weren't here. Am I, am I here now? Can you see me? Make sure I make sure I'm going live or there. Everything's working before we get going. Okay. Yes. Great. 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 Yeah. I was, I guess I was a little late. The girls were coming in. They just came in, my husband just picked them up from school and they just came in. So I said hi real quick and then started the live. Okay, great. So this is what we're gonna create today. And uh, this is really actually a quick and easy one to watercolor. And we're gonna do something a little bit different, probably something you don't think about all the time. We're gonna stamp our image in a brown ink as opposed to a black ink. I like to do that sometimes to uh, change it up, but also to soften the look, especially some, some of your images are, they're very linear, but there's a lot of lines, like this stamp set has a lot of lines. And so if you think of all those lines are black, it can kind of become a lot. All of a sudden your beautiful flowers seem very black. So this is a kind of a fun way to do a little different. So I'm gonna turn the camera away from my face because I'm already getting sweaty and down to my work surface and let's get started here. So just give me a second, it will go black. Oh no, where's the camera? Okay, there it is. All right. Now I'll try to tighten this here. All right, ooh, that looks very close. We don't need to be that close move everything up so I have my my messy water media mat today because tumble dual brush pens do stain so this is the one that's not near and dear to me so if this one gets stained which as you can see it has and is um, I'm not so worried about coloring on it what I do need to do though is first stamp our image so one of the key parts or key things when doing watercolor with Tombow dual brush pens and these are the pens here. These pens actually are pretty comparable to, so if you don't have Tombow Dual Brush pens, Distress Ink markers would work. Uh, there's some other markers out on the mar market. I think even Stamping Up has some pretty comparable markers. You just want markers that are have water-based ink. I prefer Tombow because they, I feel like the colors are more intense. They're just really intense. Today we're doing a subtle palette, but that's why I like them. So you need the markers and then the other important thing, which I got distracted, is Bristol paper. Bristol paper is a very smooth, well actually I should say, there's two types of Bristol paper, Bristol vellum and Bristol smooth. And Bristol smooth is my preference and it's the one I would recommend if you're gonna purchase a pad, get Bristol Smooth, that's really all you need. If you made a mistake like I have and purchased a vellum, a Bristol vellum pad, and by the way, Bristol vellum looks pretty much exactly like Bristol Smooth. So you can't just tell by looking at the pad, you have to read, make sure you read carefully the um, cover of the pad. Let me show you. I have Bristol, uh, Strathmore is the brand. Bristol is the type of paper, and you can see here it says smooth surface. If this was the vellum, it'd say Bristol vellum surface. So just so you know, you can't really tell by looking because Bristol smooth and Bristol vellum basically are identical as far as looks go, just by the, your eye. But this is really a smooth surface and it allows this ink to glide really smoothly over it so we can get nice gradations. So this is definitely kind of a must. You could use watercolor paper. It doesn't mean you can't. I just like how I get these smoother gradations. And um, Bristol is easier to stamp on than watercolor because of all the tooth on watercolor paper. 
All right, so let's move this out of the way and my camera will stop panicking for a moment because we actually aren't ready for that water media mat. First, we have to stamp our image. All right, so I'm gonna pop my Bristol paper into my Misty and we are gonna stamp the main image from the Anemone stamp set. This one came out in the September release. It's a really pretty set. And you can see how pretty it is in black. It is also beautiful in black, but it's just nice to change it up because you can see how much, the especially the veins of the leaf, there's tons of lines there. So if you're, if you're stamping and you press them maybe a little bit too hard, you're gonna lose a lot of that definition and your leaves are gonna start to look like black. <laughs> So it's fun to try something different like this brown. It'll soften it a little bit. And I'm gonna show you a trick today. You probably know it already though, of how to kind of fake colored embossing powder. We are going to um, I forget to use my favorite line with Annette. Oh, you know what? I was saying, I was practicing saying it, Michelle, before I went live today because I just wanted to make sure I was saying it right because last time I talked about the stamps that I didn't, wasn't sure if I was saying it right. And I was th thinking when I was practicing saying an enemy, it's like a a an enemy. <laughs> so that's pretty funny that you you thought of that or, or have a set. You have a sentiment set that goes with that. That's pretty crazy. I didn't even know, see, you have to understand I'm a desert girl. I didn't even know there was a flower called this. <laughs> I only know thanks to Finding Nemo. No, just your line? Well, it needs to be, it needs to be included in this stamp set. I think it would be a great <laughs> addition. Actually, I guess it wouldn't be. You wouldn't want to send anybody that, would you? <laughs> so maybe I take it back. It's actually kind of a mean thing, isn't it? But I thought I only knew about, you know, the coral or the ocean anemone. All right, so I'm going to actually heat emboss this. Uh, that's going to make sure that none of my ink runs. Well, you don't know my friends. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Um, so I'm actually going to uh, heat emboss this. So I am going to apply some anti-static powder. Uh, the heat embossing is going to prevent that ink from um, bleeding at all when I watercolor, but I will admit I'm a very low water watercolorer. I use very little water. I apply some anti-static powder, and I'm going to ink this up in a brown ink. So I don't actually have brown in, um, embossing powder, but I have brown ink. So if you have colored inks and you have clear embossing powder, which this is in here, you can make, you can basically fake um, colored embossing powder. So that's a pretty handy trick. Sometimes that's what you really need. So I'm going to just ink this up. This is a Distress Oxide Walnut Stain. I have like gold embossing powder. I have silver, of course, I have the standards, white and black. And then I think the only other colors that I got outside of those basics, white, black, though black is debatable whether you need it, though I'm kind of obsessed with it right now, gold and silver uh, and clear, of course. Gosh, it sounds like I have a ton now <laughs> when I think about it. The only other ones I really have outside of that is uh, red, which I do recommend a red one. It's handy for Christmas cards. And then a pink. Ooh, that looks good already. I think I'll just stamp it one more time. Oh, look at how pretty those flowers are. I love the kind of vintage look that the brown ink gives it. I'm just gonna do the centers one more time. You do need, though, to do this, you do need to be able to stamp it multiple times in the same spot. So you would need a stamp positioning tool like a Misty. I was just going to say that exactly on Bristol paper. Yeah. 
looks very pretty. Okay, that looks perfect. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to clean my stamp now. And even though this is an oxide and it's usually pretty wet and sticky, I just wanna double make sure that that ink, that I get embossing powder all over the ink, I'm gonna stamp it once in Versamark, just to make sure. I might be able to get away with it because this is that um, dis distress oxide and it's it usually stays wet a little bit longer than your typical dye inks, well actually a, fa a fair bit longer, but I just would, I really don't want my ink to bleed, so I'm gonna just ensure that by putting one layer of Versamark on top of my image. And now I'm for sure gonna have that ink stick, I'm sorry, that powder stick all over my image. Okay, there we go. Now it's time for the um, clear embossing powder. And I need a little scrap of cardstock here to kind of scoop this up to hopefully avoid a giant mess. Here we go. Probably still make a big mess, but I'm gonna try. All right, that looks perfect. Looks so good. Now time to heat set. Ah, I made a mess. How? I thought I was being so careful. I don't know. I, it's like I need bigger, um, a bigger Tupperware thing, I think. Let's see if I can, I'm gonna scoop this and try to salvage this. I'm scooping it into a, a uh, filter coffee filter off, kind of off screen here. Save some of that embossing powder, even though it's not that much. I don't know why I feel the need, but there. All right, I saved it. Just wipe this down real quick. And now time to heat set. So I'm gonna turn my uh, heat gun on, or heat tool on, so it's gonna be a little noisy. There we go. All right, I think that looks done. I'm just gonna give it a good check. Lately, I seem to be—I seem to be jumping the gun on my heat embossing, and think I've heat set all my powder when I actually haven't. I think I missed this little bit here. Okay, look at that. Doesn't that look like I used brown embossing powder? Such a handy trick to have, and it looks so pretty. All right, now we're ready to watercolor. I'm gonna grab my water media mat here again. Stick that down and grab my colors. So since I use very little water, I'm gonna basically spray my water onto my work surface. It's kind of like my pool of water here. That's pretty much all I'm gonna use. The, the most amount of water I'm gonna use is when I clean my brush in between colors. I have a bunch of brushes, round brushes here in various sizes. I have a one, I guess a zero, triple zero. Didn't know that there, there was really such a thing, I guess, and a two. So different sizes here. I might not even use this one, but I thought I might grab it for those little, teeny little flowers. All right, let's start with our big flowers. I'm gonna grab this mauve light mauve color, and 
then I want to have a gradation that's darker in the center and lighter out to the tips. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here so you guys can really see. So I'm going to color where I want it to be darkest, which is again is at the center, and then color out a bit. Really quick and easy. I'm going to do all the petals. I guess this is a petal turned on its side a little bit. So now that we got that, grab my brush and I'm going for number two. Make sure it's clean. Okay, it looks clean. And I'm just get a small amount of water. You can see I'm twisting and releasing some of the water onto my work surface because even though I dipped my brush into just a little tiny puddle of water, um, that was actually a little too much. If you need very little water. Okay. Now I'm going to go over with my damp brush over where that ink is to activate it and start to blend it out. Perfect. This paint creates a really faint, a very light pet pink petal with a soft gradation. And I only go, I'm only really going over the very edge of where I stopped coloring with the marker. And there's our soft petal or flower. Actually, we did the whole thing fast, right? Let's do another one. Now that was the easy one. We can even go in here and add a little dark, but I'm going to wait. I will add more to this and I'll add a little color to the very center, but we're going to stop there for now. Let's move on to another one. Now this one has some like curled up or cupped petals and I want to add a little color down there. Okay, a little contrast and this one has some more overlapping. So I mean, I can carry that darker color right up to where they overlap. This one is going to be about the same as the other ones that I had made. Then again, we've got an overlap here. All right, pretty simple. Now it's time to blend it out. Grab my brush again. I put my hand immediately into my puddle of water. <laughs> it feels like no matter where I put it, I always end up putting my hand in it somehow. That's the only downfall. Okay, going over that ink, activating it a little bit, bringing it out to the edge. Ooh, I forgot to do right here. I'll have to do that later. Blend that out. And thanks to that Bristol paper, we're able to kind of stretch this color, even though we're only activating kind of a small amount and it's a light color. If this were a dark color, we'd definitely get it to stretch and cover more of the petal. But again, thanks to that smooth Bristol paper, it's very easy to kind of grab that color and just pull it all the way to the edge of the petal. Okay, we're gonna get a little bit here and have to come back to that guy. Moving on to this one. You can see how quick it's actually going. We are going to add more, but the additional things that we are going to add are going to be very uh, minimal. All right. Grab my brush. Kind of get rid of some of that excess water. I really don't need very much. Go over that edge. I think the trickiest part of this technique is getting used, getting used, getting used to the, the amount of water you need in your brush, how much, how loaded your brush needs to be with water. And I think that's where most people um, don't expect how little I actually use. because it doesn't take much. And that's why this is probably not even really water coloring. <laughs> I don't know what this is called. It's probably not, doesn't really count as water coloring. 
Oh, thanks, Michelle. Because I, I use so little water. But I don't know. I don't know what else to call it. If I don't call it watercoloring, I really don't know what else to call it. It's fake watercolor. It's 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 the those who don't like to watercolor watercoloring. <laughs> okay, Michelle says it counts. All right, that's done. I do feel like a poser next to like the real watercolorists like Debbie Hughes and um, Sandy Olnick and just, just about a lot of people. Dawn from W plus nine, she's amazing. Okay, so that's done. Now let's do the center real quick. I'm just gonna color it in. I'm not going to paint. I'm just gonna take my Tombow and color it in and use these just like you would typically use a marker adding a little bit of yellow to the center. It's very subtle. You can't super see it because of, um, it's just tiny spot, you just have tiny openings. And then I'm gonna take that same yellow and color these little flowers here. They might be leaves, I don't know, <laughs> again. I didn't know this flower even existed. I don't even know if I'm coloring it the right colors, to be honest. I didn't think about that till just now. I don't know if I looked it up. Usually I look up flowers before I color them so I kind of understand what they typically are. It doesn't mean that's what I'm gonna exactly color them, but I like to have a, at least an understanding. All right, so now, now we're gonna do something I don't typically do when I watercolor or Tombow dual brush pens. We're gonna go in and basically add some streaks and some more color with the markers and I'm not gonna blend them out. So when you do, this is a Copic, well, it's a marker coloring technique, but it's typically used with Copics. You do the uh, kind of press and flick and you get these more, well, I'm better with Copics than I am with Tombos. But you get these more feathered strokes. We're gonna try that here. There we go, that's a little bit better. I do need to turn it though to keep my get my hand in the right position. But I don't typically do this and I really liked the um, contrast that it added. So I might you might be seeing me doing this more. It adds some more darks, which I love. It adds some more contrast, but it also adds um, a nice little visual texture to those flowers. Pretty, right? Go here. I love that streaking. And I can even darken some of my shadows too. Like kind of the belly part of the cupped part of the flower. And we only got one more petal here to go on this flower anyways. <laughs> Time for the next one. And we're getting all this con all this like interest and contrast with one, essentially one marker, because you can't really tell that you can't really see the yellow in the center. I can here, but you, I don't think you guys can really see it. But I think that's so cool that we're getting all that with just one marker. If we had Copics, we would need at least three markers, I think, to get this kind of a look with Copics. So I do love my Copics, but to get gradations with them, you do need a fair amount of markers. All right, so the flowers are done, believe it or not. Now we're gonna go on to the leaves. Now the leaves are a little bit more complicated because I can't help myself with leaves. I love to do two colors for leaves. I just love the depth that it adds. We're gonna start with our darkest shade, which is 249. And again, for the pink we used, I, did, I actually do have the colors in the description. 
772 for the flowers, the petals, and then 025 for the center and the teeny little flowers here. Okay, we're gonna start with this darker color at the base of the leaves. So where the leaf would start from the stem, add a little bit of color. I'm gonna do a couple leaves at once here. You wanna do a little, these little leaves that are on the, by the berries. So is this like, can you eat these berries? I'm gonna guess they're poisonous. <laughs> I'm just curious, is anybody familiar with this flower, an anemone? Is this the have edible berries? Probably not, <laughs> I would guess, but I don't know. Okay, I'm getting my water here and I'm just gonna blend out that darker green. Now this is a much darker color compared to the pink we were using, so you can see how much more it stretches over the petal, I mean the leaf, it really carries. And we don't have to worry about going over those lines because we did heat emboss, emboss this. So all of our um, ink is protected. It's not going to, even though this is a distress oxide, which is a, a ink that would react to water. I think it's just a bouquet. Oh, okay, the berries were added. So it's not something that this, this flower makes is berries. That makes a lot more sense. Okay, good, so we can eat those berries. <laughs> Berries are my one of my favorite fruits. What are your favorite fruits? I love, raspberries are my most favorite. And then I love, of course, blackberries and strawberries, mangoes. And exactly, I was gonna say, mangoes is my next, my, one of my next favorite fruit. Did I cut, I guess I added a little green here. I didn't realize I did. Oh, I just did add green there. I'm getting forgetful of what I'm doing. Okay, all right, I'm gonna stop there. I've got like, well, we'll do this here. Several leaves colored here with green. I don't wanna, let's pull it down so you guys can see. I don't wanna get too ahead of myself. Yeah, mangoes are one of my favorites. And of course, I still love, I love bananas. But I consider that not a healthy fruit hoping for blackberries. Is it blackberry season, like soon? I thought that was kind of like a late summer crop. We even get blackberries now, not here in the desert part of Arizona, but up in the mountain part of Arizona, blackberries grow. And we would pick them sometimes, we'd even pick them. I've never seen raspberries grow out here, but we have had blackberries. I have found blackberries and picked them in the wild before. It's like foraging and Foraging and rock hounding, which is collecting rocks, are like my favorite things to do when I, we go camping or spend any time in nature. I'm a collector. My neighbor has them as big as your thumb. Oh my gosh, that sounds, my stomach growl. That sounds so good. Oh, that sounds really good. Cherries are good too. That's, a good, that's another berry, right? Or no, berries grow only on bushes? I don't know how it works. It's confusing, especially when weird things like tomatoes or fruit and then I start to get all kind of confused. And this looks pretty just in this green, but we're gonna add some more complexity, I think is the right way to describe it, to these leaves by adding that chartreuse kind of green. Oh, I love this image. I think this, this stamped better than my first one. I think this card's gonna be better than my first one. And we're just cruising. Nothing I'm doing is hard. I'm, I'm currently, I'm standing up. So I'm standing up and painting this. So I'm not hunched out, well, I am hunched over, but I'm not hunched over like really painstakingly getting the details. I'm just activating that ink and brushing it over the rest of the leaf. That's basically what I've done. Oops, I missed, misunderstood that leaf. Um, the whole time I've been coloring this actually. Real easy, easy coloring. 
cleaning my brush here every once in a while because because of this ink being so much darker, um, it moves, oh, I missed a leaf. It uh, moves, I move too much color and it starts to look flat. I still want to get a gradation, so I need to clean my brush once in a while to get rid of some of the ink, some of the color, so it actually does get lighter as we go to the tip of the leaf. All right, I missed this one here, so I gotta get him. And then we'll be ready for the lighter green, the chartreuse green, the limey green that's gonna kind of open it up and, or liven it up. All right, so I'm actually going to color this onto my water media mat. Here's how my mat got stained, because I like to color and get some of the ink down onto the mat and then pick it up and apply it. That's another way to do it, especially if I don't want it to be so intense. If I don't want it to be as intense, this is a great way to have more control over the intensity of the color. So I'm gonna pick up with my damp brush some of that ink. And now we're gonna go over kind of the second half of the flower of the leaves. Don't have to go over the whole leaf. Add some of that fresh green, just kind of liven them up a little bit. I, lo I love to do these two tones, especially on leaves. I think it just adds a lot more interest to the image. Oops, I color it a little outside of the line, oh well. That's okay. Again, not, I'm standing up, leaning over, so I'm not doing the best job, but that just shows you how kind of easy and relaxed this kind of coloring is. And I think one of the reasons why, look, I colored outside the lines too. I can pick up some of that color. One of the reasons why it's so easy is because we did heat emboss. So we have that emboss resist factor kind of working in our favor to help us kind of, trap in that water if we do get a little too much, too much water added to our paper or to our color. And the boss resist really helps to kind of keep everything in place. Going back and looking at my original every once in a while, see how I'm doing. Comparison, I might even go and add a little bit more dark once I'm done, I don't even know if I got those. <laughs> a little more of that lime green or almost made our way all the way around. Okay, I'm gonna add, go back in with my dark green. You know what, I'm gonna wait. I want to do that, but I'm not sure if these are still wet, so I'm gonna wait a second. We'll color the berries. So we have 837, so this is our last color. And we're gonna start at the top of the berries. Let's do that here. Like so. Do a couple at once. And I need some more clean water. You can see I use mostly the water to clean out my brushes. And I'm just gonna blend it out a little bit. That's it. Maybe hard to tell but on camera, but it has this beautiful little gradation like berries do, which I think makes them so pretty. Really easy. There's only, um, put my hand in water, three berries here. Let's go pull this down. Blend it over. All right, and now I'm gonna go in with that dark green. Just kind of at the very base, darken these up just a bit. Add a little shadow here. So now I'm getting a little bit more painterly, thinking about where it would be darker. Some of these are fine, I'm not gonna mess with them. 
some of them I don't have as much contrast as I'd like, so I'm gonna just amp up the dark a little bit. And I do think I need to blend out these two leaves and then we'll be done. Blend out that green with that damp with just a damp brush, just like we've been doing the whole time. And I also think by doing this in the brown, kind of gives it much more of a fall feel. And there it is; it's all done being colored. I'm gonna zoom out. Pretty fast, I think, especially especially when you think of watercolor and you're like, oh gosh, or maybe it's just me. I think watercoloring, that sounds so hard and intimidating, but that, I think this was really easy and probably one of my prettier flowers that I've colored. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry just for a second before I die cut it out with the matching dye. There is a beautiful, I had to look at the time, I thought it was 3.08. I'm like, there's no way it can be 3.08, but I guess we, colored that in 30, I would say probably 30 minutes. Definitely less than that because I had to stamp it before, so we had to calculate that time, but it did not take very long. So there's a matching dye. And again, Waffle Flower makes these. Yeah, I think it definitely has a vintage feel, which I kind of love. <laughs> um, it would totally be so different if it was in black. It'd be so very different. Uh, this dye is just incredible. Do you see how it cuts out all the tiny little openings between the flowers? And Nina does a really incredible job with designing these dyes and making sure to include cuts in those places because then you get the most beautiful lacy flower. Yeah, they're re they really are great. And they all come pre-cut, so you don't have to ever trim your dyes out, So, which is... I. Didn't know I was such a prima donna in that <laughs> area. I thought, oh, cutting dyes, you know, it's not that big of a deal. And then all of a sudden when you don't have to anymore, you're like, anytime you have a dye set you have to cut out, you're like, oh no, we have to cut these out. Wow. I've become very, very spoiled. It's all right if you're mad at me. I've become very spoiled. All right, so while the flowers are drying, we are going to cut out this frame here. And this frame was made with the new uh, nesting hexagon frames dies. I love frames because they're a great way to kind of n minimize or narrow your canvas because sometimes even an A2 card um, can feel like a lot to fill out. And this just is a great way to kind of narrow it down and provide a nice white space, but not feel like it's empty. Frames are great for that purpose. We're gonna use the largest one, and I'm die cutting it out of some really pretty light brown cardstock. I thought this went well with the brown in the that we used for the ink. Seriously, y'all, I don't know if you can tell, but this one this second one I did is better than the first. This is gonna be a prettier card. I got a better impression this time. You wanna trade all your frame dies for these? <laughs> They're so great. Okay, we'll go this way. Pop it in. All right. There we go. I might have enough here to stamp my sentiment. If not, I can to totally stamp my sentiment in here, but I kind of don't want to because that's a great um, die cut uh, hexagon as is. And I don't know, if I might want to save that for another project. So I'm gonna see if I can't fit my sentiment on my scrap. I'm trying to find my tweezers here so I can gently, I can't find them, so I'll use my X-Acto knife. Gently get my frame off of my platform. There we go. We'll put that to the side. And now let's stamp our sentiment. We are rocking. 
cruising. Who thought, who would have known we would be breezing through this card? But it's going so fast. One of those easy ones. Pretty easy watercoloring. Okay, pull off the flowers. Gonna grab so the state same stamp set, the anemone stamp set has a pretty sentiment. <laughs> Enjoy your day. So I'm pull that off. I love how it's scripty and linear. That's my favorite kind of combo of sentiments. And it's all in one, which is nice. And there's a matching die for it. Oh, we totally have room. Okay, great. Place it down here on my scrap. Got to move some stuff out of the way. And we're just going to ink this up in walnut stain. So again, keeping everything very consistent. I'm not going to heat emboss over it though. There's no need. And I prefer Distress Oxides looking flat and um, not glossy looking. Okay, we'll do it one more time. But it looks perfect. Just gonna make sure it's a little bit more intense. Great, absolutely perfectly stamped. Oh, gorgeous. Now just wait till you see the die that die cuts it out. So in addition to that beautiful die for the flowers, there's a single flower die and leaf die, but there's also a die for the sentiment. That's one of my favorite things is sentiment dies. I love them. And I love when they're included in stamp sets. Especially sets where you don't think you're gonna get it, like a flower set, you don't think you're gonna get a die to cut out the sentiment. So it's like such a bonus, it feels like. Okay, just lined it up. Now I'll run it through my die cutting machine. Here we go. I agree. I agree, all the companies should be doing it. I love it, I, it's like my favorite thing. There it is, die cut out. Now we're, we've got like all our pieces done. I guess they, I do have to die cut the flowers out. It just gives you so much more um, play if you have a die that cuts out your sentiment. I wouldn't, I, the only way I really could do this card today is have a die that cuts it out or I fussy cut it. So very appreciative when I don't have to die, fussy cut a sentiment out. It just looks better cut. I, I, I do admit, I, I think I do a pretty good job fussy cutting things out. So I guess I'll brag about myself, but um, the die does it better. Dies do it better. Okay, I'm trying my best here to get this really well lined up. And even though this is a magnetic um, base, I'm still gonna tape it down just because this is a pretty big die. And I find that larger dies seem to shift more in your die cutting machine because of the pressure starting on the end and having to work it way through and it kind of, I think, shifts it and makes your paper kind of move. Hello! So I got it lined up, let's die cut it out. There it is. Ugh, sticky, sticky. I need to clean my plates. All right, oh, we got a very good cut. I was a little worried for, for some reason. It looked like it wasn't lining up right, but it's a very good cut. And again, you can see here where the die cuts out those little negative areas in between the flowers, which is such a great detail. I can't stress it enough. It makes it so pretty and lacy. Thank 
you. Popping them out here with my exacto knife just to get them all. And I think that was the last one. Oh, nope, there's one right in the center. And there it is. So pretty, love how lacy that looks. And it's gonna look really great on, you can see on the black how the black kind of makes all those little openings pop. So we're gonna make it, place it on a piece of colored cardstock as well, or I should say pattern paper. And that's gonna help to really draw your eye to those openings. Oh, so pretty. So this is a piece of pattern paper from Waffle Flowers, uh, Unicorn, Half Hat, Half Hat, Half Hat, nope. Half Half Dots, here you go. So thank you, it's beautiful. So I love these, uh, if you're not familiar, I feel like I'm always telling people about these paper pads because I love them. If you're not familiar with Waffle Flowers paper pads, they're a little bit unique dimension because they are eight and a half by five and a half, which means if you cut one sheet in half, you're gonna have two panels. And you can see here, it's, just, it's messy because I've destroyed it. <laughs> I've made very much, I've really gotten my use out of it. Let's try to find a nice uncut piece. Here we go. So here's one sheet of paper, and you can see how if you cut it in half, you have two A2 panels. So I just took one paper from this pad. This is what it looked like. Cut it in half, and now I have two pads of pattern, or two pieces, two panels of pattern paper. And I like this kind of mintier one. We're going to do kind of an inside out position of the flowers where the flowers are going over and under the frame. It's a great way to get some more depth out of your image, like so. So I'm going to, actually, it's gonna be like this, where the point, I had to look at my original. Okay, like that. Uh, I'm blown away how this, it's so funny how these cards, when I do them, sometimes second time, they're, they're not as good as the first. And sometimes the second time around, they're better than the first. This one is a better than the first. All right, I'm gonna pull these petals out too. There we go. So we have most of the image out of the frame, except for up here, we have a little bit tucked under. Again, just a nice way to add a little bit more depth. So I just temporarily taped it in place, a little piece of micropore tape, just to kind of hold it in place while I start to add my foam adhesive. And very quickly, since I forgot, I'm going to glue my panel down onto my card base before I get, or use a tape runner to stick it down before I get too far ahead of myself. So just set the paper adhesive down. Line it up here. There we go. Now I'm gonna get my foam adhesive and I'm gonna start cutting, find my scissors, here they are. Some pieces to go in the back of this because I, I do wanna pop this up. Because we know dimension is life, right? <laughs> That's Laura Fedora saying, dimension is life. It just really adds so much. Now I'm gonna cut some smaller strips and add them to the frames, or some thinner strips, I should say. And I don't have to worry about adhering these flowers to the frame because the foam adhesive will do all that work for me when I stick it to the card front. And I could use a piece of press and seal too to hold the, the frame and the flowers in place while I did this foam piece adhesive part, but tape works too. I used to use tape all the time before I Finally brought some press and seal. And I especially like this micro pore tape because it's a little bit 
transparent so you can see through it a little bit like you can see through press and seal. But both work. If you have press and seal, use that. But a lot of people I know can't get it and they're kind of like really, I mean, it's a kind of an essential tool now, I feel like. But there are ways kind of around it. But of course, press and seal is the easiest way. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm trying to think of my last live. I use press and seal a lot, so probably one of my other lives you will have seen me use it. Okay, I'm just trying to remove the backing here on these. And all this foam adhesive. One more to go. Okay, bring this over. Try to get this in the center. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole card. <laughs> Does anybody struggle with getting these things centered? I think I did okay. It could have been better, but it could have been worse. Yes, it's the scariest part too. I don't dare, it's, it's there now. <laughs> I could have done better, but it's there now. It's gonna be, that's where it's gonna be. Now we're gonna pop this up with a little bit of foam adhesive. Yeah, it's hard, right? It's very nerve wracking too. That's why I typically use liquid glue because it gives me that little bit of wiggle room to get it in the right spot. Which I need most of the time. It's that little aid, that little help. <laughs> All right, I do have to, I was, placing the sentiment over my card here to kind of see where it was going to go. And I do think there's a couple spots or a spot that I need to double up the adhesive just to support the sentiment a little bit better. It's right here where it's going to go. So do I need to, yeah, I want to do one, a little bit extra layer of adhesive right here by the E and the N, but I think I need to make cut a little, I do it on camera. A little piece here too. That's where the E and the N are. I'm gonna cut a small strip to go out to here. And I'm doubling it up because we have to remember the frame and the flowers are on one layer of foam. So to get that little bit of sentiment to touch all the way down to the card base, I have to double up the adhesive. So I'm going to remove the backing here. I have the second layer right stuck to my finger. I think it goes right there. Hopefully that's in the right spot. Yeah, that looks right. Now just removing the backing on the other pieces. Stick that down there. Is it straight? I think it is. Okay, it's done. There it is. A nice kind of clean. I don't know if I would describe this as clean and simple, but it is a pretty minimal design card. But I love that subtle um, pattern paper in the background. Of course, those flowers are so pretty and was really easy to watercolor that color this with the Tombow dual brush pens. And I think it's really fun and something, a good takeaway from this live, think about stamping your images in something other than black or even white embossing powder. Sometimes that's a popular one too, but this, so this I did in brown. So that's a nice variation. It adds a, and Antiquity, is that the right word? And a soft touch to the images as well. There's the two cards. So fun. Okay, I'm gonna turn the camera back to myself and sign out. We are done for the day under an hour too. Who would have thought we would color flower, watercolor flowers and make a whole card under an hour. All right.
There we go. Thank you guys for spending your Tuesday with me. Uh, I will be live again on Waffle Flowers Instagram on Friday. Yeah, definitely. I I've been using so much craft right now, Michelle. It's not even funny. <laughs> if you go through my to my IG account, you'll see it's like craft, 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 craft. I just I've always loved craft cardstock, and um, fall is just like what else? Do you you just have to use it. <laughs> but I'll be live on Thursday or Friday on Waffle Flowers Instagram account uh, at one Pacific time. So hopefully I can see you guys there. We're gonna do some something else. I don't know what we're doing yet. <laughs> we're gonna do something else too. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye everybody.